Welcome YouTubers, Critical Blindside here. Going to be doing the long review of John Wick. Going to be going a little bit more in depth into that video, or that movie rather, and kind of exploring really what separates it from normal action films that I hate. Uh, I'm really, really hard on action genre, mostly because it's very vapid, very uh, unintelligent, very pandering, not subtle, which I think that's the, probably the main downfall of American style action movies is its lack of subtlety and how much it beats the audience over the head with whatever it is. There's nothing left to open to interpretation. Everything is given to you on a platter and uh, I just, uh, I don't appreciate that as a moviegoer. Um, I'm smarter than that, and most people are smarter than that, but they treat you like you're an idiot, so, uh, most of the time, which is not what John Wick did, which is why I am praising it, and why I think it deserves more than one review. It's getting a second, longer review. Um, so, if you want to check out my first review of it, it's a short review, it kind of gives a very brief synopsis and overview of the movie, it'll be here. If I can figure out how to do this. If I can't figure out how to do this, I will literally be pointing to nothing. But if you see something there, then I figured out how to do it, and kudos to me. So, um, let's get into the long review. So, John Wick. Uh, and, and one thing, I'm not going to cover the things that I covered in my short review, because you can see it there. I'm not going to reiterate. So, if it seems like this is a little lacking in a few points, um, it's because I've already made them in the other review. So, um, let's get to it. So John Wick is a successful American action movie because of one major reason and a lot of little reasons. One major reason because it was subtle. It does not beat you over the head with whatever it's trying to do and it leaves a lot of things open for interpretation. Critical blindside, what does it leave open to interpretation? One major thing, the currency system, which uh, it was brilliant. So, uh, you know, the plot is set in motion by whoever, uh, you know, whatever happens. It's not important what or why, it's just set into motion. And I'll get more into that later. But, um, so, you see John Wick uh, getting back to the way that he was, his old assassin ways. So, in order to do this, he has to um, break a, uh, I guess he buried under concrete his old assassin gear, uh, including rows and rows and rows and rows of what look like uh, uh, casino chips, but they're all gold. So it's not, it doesn't tell you what it is. It doesn't give like a, a, a pointer to it and list under it what it is. It doesn't do any of that junk. You're just seeing it and you, you get what he's doing. He's, uh, you know, getting back into his old life. So you see him uh, breaking apart the concrete that holds all this stuff. So, um, the first time he has to use this currency is whenever he goes to the hotel. So we learn that this hotel is pretty much an assassin's hotel. It has a code, it has a, um, uh, a list of, of rules and guidelines that assassins are um, kind of sworn in to uphold. So one of the things is you can't conduct business on uh, the, the grounds of the hotel. In other words, you can't assassinate, you can't be assassinated by anybody. This is a safe zone. And it's kept that way through the management. So whenever uh, Keanu Reeves checks into the hotel, he says, oh, the, you know, the, is there new management or what it looks different? And then uh, the concierge or whoever it is says, yes, it's under uh, new management, but still the same, or it's renovated, but still same management. Or it, it gives you the idea that um, it, things still run the way that John Wick remembers them. And he hands him a gold coin, one gold, gold coin. So it doesn't tell you how much that's worth or what he just paid for. It just lets you know that assassins pay for things, assassin-y things, with this currency, and um, the only way to obtain this currency, and it doesn't tell you this either, You're, you learn this by the actions of the people in the film, the currency is actually, you get it by doing assassin type things, by killing people or whatever. So um, you're treated to this entire underground um, 
uh, assassin world uh, with its own currency and everything. And it's all like an onion layer throughout the entire film. It doesn't explain anything, which I think is just great. And I think more action films need to take note of this um, subtlety and this uh, engrossment into its world. A lot of the times, um, whenever things have to be explained through expository dialogue or through text on a screen, which is awful, I hate it, um, a lot of times it breaks the world building of the movie and it's unfortunate in most action films that uh, it thinks its audience is dumb so it has to explain everything every time it does that every time I see uh, Los Angeles uh, 2012 or 2013 whatever it is that breaks me out of the movie uh, experience because I know in that universe this text that's crawling across screen does not exist so it's just one thing that breaks continuity and breaks the engrossing experience for the moviegoer. John Wick does not suffer from this. It, it, uh, it's a well enough told story and a well enough written screenplay that uh, you can learn things just by watching and just by um, paying attention to the movie. And these are not um, hard things to pick up on, but um, it just helps you engross you into this world by not hitting you over the head with it. And I think, you know, a lot of people, a lot of action movies and a lot of um, other directors could take note of that. Now, um, it doesn't tell you how much currency John Wick has acquired. It shows that he's got a lot of these coins. So throughout the film, there's other assassins that are hired to try to take him out. And I'm not going to spoil it, but one of these assassins that's hired um, ends up being a major plot point. In fact, two of them do. One is, um, why can I remember his name? One is, oh my god, why can I? Anyway, Willem Dafoe. Sorry, sorry, Willem Dafoe. Um, so one is him, and the other is a beautiful uh, brunette. I forget her name, but I'll ping it right here. Um, she ends up breaking one of the rules in the, um, in the, of the hotel. And at the time, uh, you, you don't see the immediate consequences. So you're like, oh, so why is there a rule there? Why is there this whatever, um, if they're not going to uphold it? And at the end of the movie, she gets what's coming to her and she pays with her life. This is how important this currency and this whole world is to uphold. Um, that you will lose your life if you break the rules. And it, no one ever threatens her. No one ever says, oh my God, she's breaking the rules. It's not like that. She just does it. And she may be the first one who's ever broken the rule. Who knows? But you learn it it's, you know, means business at the end of the movie because she gets killed for it. So, and really there's only one other thing that kind of took me out of the movie um, was whenever... Uh, so Theon Greyjoy, which, first off, I don't like Theon Greyjoy in Game of Thrones. Yes, he did have some really messed up stuff happen to him, especially towards the end of the last season. So you kind of feel bad for him then, but I just don't like his character. I don't like the actor. There's something about the actor that I personally don't like. Now, that's subjective. That does not go into my um, end review or any opinion or like that. But this, in this movie, he kind of plays you know, kind of not the same character, obviously, but kind of something, a bumbling kind of, I want power, but I'm not taken seriously, but I want to be taken seriously, you know, Russian mafia boss's son. And um, he sets the plot into motion uh, by doing something to John Wick. And at the time, we don't know who John Wick is. We know he's kind of, you know, an assassin or something like that, but we don't really know who he is. And what really, I, uh, this is the only thing that I thought the director really goofed and really messed up on was we learn who John Wick is m at the beginning of the movie, mostly by expository dialogue between the uh, Russian mob 
boss and the son. So the mob boss is talking to the son about who John Wick is and who exactly he messed with. He, uh, John Wick has done this. John Wick has done that. And it felt like expository dialogue. It felt like uh, a character explaining something to another character for the sake of the audience. So with how well the film handled everything else, literally everything else, I expected this to be handled with the same kind of grace and delicacy, and it just wasn't. So a lot of people, a lot of normal moviegoers are not going to care about this, or not going to pick up on it, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm better, than, it's, it's not anything like that, but with somebody who's looking for more from a movie that gave me so much, it's just unfortunate to see, um, you know, who John Wick is delivered in this way, and... And the problem is, is you, you learn who John Wick is throughout the movie by his actions. You don't even need to be told who he is. Yes, I do admit it does kind of build up your expectations of John Wick. And it's like, ooh, he's, you know, the best of the best. But throughout the movie, he proves he's the best of the best by what he can do. So um, it just, I, I felt it was forced and, and unnecessary. And really the only, kind of the only, you know, black mark I can put on the movie, the only negative I can put on the movie, um, really, is that. And one other small little caveat is, is digital blood sprays. Um, I'm not a fan of them. I've talked about them in other movies, or in other reviews, sorry. Um, I'm not a fan of the digital blood splatter. It was used appropriately here. Um, everything was very quick. Everything was very calculated. Everything it was quick cuts for the action. And you, and the thing was that the blood splatters that it did show are in the background. So you see him pointing his gun like back here and a blood splatter in the corner of the frame, something like that. Um, whenever you make a digital blood splatter, and I thought that was a good use of it. When you make a digital blood splatter right in center frame and you make it the, 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 the focal point of that particular scene it looks completely fake and it looks completely wrong just because our computers haven't rendered things perfectly to real life yet but whenever it was whenever it's done like that in a corner after a quick cut maybe a quick cut after that it didn't bother me so much so I think that's a, a clever way of, of using something that the director probably knows looks bad digital butt splatters and getting around it he can't make people's faces blow up without, you know, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort, whenever someone can just do it on a computer and, you know, for very minimal. So, you know, I realize, you know, this is a business, people have to sacrifice things, but um, it's just I don't want to see a mist, a pressurized mist come out of somebody's head. Uh, but when filmed this way, it, it did actually kind of look good. And that kind of brings me into the next point is the action. Um, the action is very um, drive-like. I compare a lot of things to drive lately because I think that's kind of the standard for subtle action. Uh, there is action in drive, uh, but it's, it's not a 20-minute glorified action scene. It's almost ashamed of its action. It's very quick. It's very brutal. It's very... Uh, to the point and it's not glorifying anything it's letting you know that this is rough and this is brutal and it takes the toll on the audience and you can see it on the characters and the same thing with john wick um yes he wipes out 15 guys in a, a very cliched first action scene but um that first action scene like i said in my first review it it lends credence to the fact that he is not on his game right now because he's been out of it for five however many years uh, five and some change, I think is what he says. Um, so that serves, that whole action scene to me served as his anchor point for what I'm going to expect from him in the future as far as getting better. And it delivered. Um, it completely delivered. Um, the action is very precise. It's very calculated. Um, you see no unnecessary movements in the action. There's no, uh, there's None of the action to me seemed like a fight scene. It seemed like something somebody would normally do. He take another thing is he is not invincible, and and you are shown this throughout the movie. He gets cut. He gets shot. He gets injured. He gets all kinds of bruises on him. He he gets incapacitated. Um, in fact, so much so that um, one of the services at one of these hotels is a doctor, and of course his doctor is paid under the table. He can fix somebody up and. 
all that. And uh, there was a funny line in the movie where, um, you know, the doctor's giving his recommendations for rest uh, and John Wick, you know, and then he says, oh, but you're not going to do that. You're going to do your, your thing and you're going to rip open your stitches. So when you do that, come see me. So it was one of these things in the universe where even the doctors know how things are. And it just lend one more layer of believability to this entire engrossing universe, even though it's a completely ridiculous premise. I mean, this stuff doesn't exist, but it's a movie. Um, you go for escapism and uh, I want to be engrossed into a world that makes sense, you know, logically, which is why I, I've never been able to get behind any time uh, traveling uh, movie except for like Primer where I don't even fucking understand that at all. So um, yeah, movies are meant, a good movie should make you feel like you are John Wick's character or you are his partner or you are a bystander in the universe. Um, and most of the time action movies don't do this and it's it's, a shame because um, really, uh, you know, we need action movies. We need fun escapism. We need uh, something that kind of makes you pumped and motivated after you see it. And John Wick did it. And I think it succeeded mostly because of its subtlety and the fact that um, it wasn't afraid to introduce a concept without having to explain the hell out of it first and without having to have to roll text along the screen or anything like that. Um, and really the, uh, the final, I would say 10 minutes, you know, makes this movie. It's, I'm not going to spoil it for you or anything like that, but again, it's another kind of, uh, action cliche that is dealt with in a clever way. And, um, yeah, if you boil down the final fight scene, you would list bullet points of cliches that you've seen in other movies, but the way that it was handled and executed um, really just kind of lends fact to this movie's success. And you're, I'm not going to spoil it, so you have to see it, but it's a very cliche final scene. But uh, like I said, it, it just handles it very well. And really, bravo to this movie. And I mean, like I said in my other review, probably Keanu Reeves' best performance uh, typical Keanu Reeves performance, but it's probably his best. And the female assassin did really, really well, even though she played a really bad, you know, nasty character. Um, and there were a couple other characters in the movie. Um, by the end, I kind of ended up like, kind of liking Theon Greyjoy. I don't know what his name in the movie was. I have no idea. I don't care. He's Theon Greyjoy. Um, but, uh, it was just a, de it was a decent action movie, and yeah, I can pick it apart, uh, but like I said in my other review, it, it misses the point of, of the entire movie when you do that, so, um, really, uh, bravo, uh, kudos to everyone involved, and hopefully I see more of Keanu like this, I mean, I would really like to see maybe even a sequel or something like that, um, this was a very, very well-handled and well-executed action movie, and, it needs more attention. I'm not going to give it any because nobody watches my shit. But um, if I was popular, I'd be doing the same review, trying to get people to go see it. It's almost out of theaters by now. But um, really, uh, go see it. So that's the long review of John Wick. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.